For decades, Mars was considered a safe frontier for robotic exploration, until now. Last night, new data confirmed that 3i slash Atlas isn't just grazing our solar neighborhood. It's veering within 17 million miles of Mars, forcing NASA, ESA, and CNSA into an unprecedented all-hands emergency. This isn't just another flyby. Trajectory models are shifting so rapidly that the risk factor has gone from theory to leave debate, with whispers of a denser-than-expected mass and solar activity complicating everything we thought we understood. If cosmic encounters like Tunguska were warnings from the past, what does this mean for Mars? And for us? Comment what you think is the single biggest risk, and prepare for answers that no one expected. Within minutes of the new trajectory alert, mission control centers across three continents snapped into action. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, flight directors pored over contingency checklists that had never left the binder. Until now. Emergency lines buzzed between Pasadena, Darmstadt, and Beijing, as the European Space Agency's operations chiefs and China's Mars mission leads joined a secure, multilingual call. The usual calm of deep space monitoring gave way to a flurry of rapid-fire commands and cross-agency code words. For the first time in history, Mars was declared under an interstellar threat drill. Every robotic asset, Mars Express, Perseverance, Tianwen-1, the Trace Gas Orbiter, shifted into risk posture. Engineers ran through their worst-case scripts. Power down non-essential systems, reorient solar panels, prep memory dumps, ready fallback antennas. The most sensitive instruments were shielded or set to safe mode, a move designed to protect them from unpredictable radiation or dust impacts. Even Ingenuity, the tiny helicopter, had its flight schedule suspended, while its handlers debated whether a dust storm or an electrical surge posed the greater threat. The European Space Agency's Mars Express team, led by Operations Chief Andrea Akamazzo, Arco Marti So, coordinated with JPL's navigation group to update orbital predictions every hour. Each revision seemed to shrink the margin for error. Internal bulletins warned of the possibility, however remote, of a cascade. Stray energetic particles, a sudden spike in solar wind, or a dust plume slamming into delicate electronics. No one could guarantee the safety of billion-dollar rovers or the continuity of science data relays. For the mission managers, the stakes felt personal. Years of work and national pride hung in the balance, measured in seconds and megabytes. The spectre of losing contact with a rover after a decade on the Martian surface was almost unthinkable. But protocol demanded discipline. Every team member knew their role. Monitor, report, execute. The only certainty was uncertainty itself, and the clock was ticking. Before the next data burst, take a moment. What's your call? Is the greatest danger a mechanical failure, a cosmic dust storm, or something even stranger? Drop your answer below. Because as the next wave of telemetry came in, the numbers were about to break all expectations. Radar teams at JPL and Darmstadt barely had time to process the first data burst before another anomaly surfaced. Over three consecutive nights, the official missed distance between 3NI slash ATLAS and Mars shrank by 0.03 astronomical units, a reduction of nearly 5 million kilometers. For orbital modelers, that kind of shift is hard to ignore. The numbers didn't just drift, they lurched, triggering a cascade of recalculations across every major space agency. Each time the new trajectory was plotted, the margin for error tightened, squeezing the safe zone around Mars's robotic fleet. Normally, comets approaching the inner solar system begin to outgas, spewing jets of vapor and dust that nudge them off course. But when analysts checked for the telltale signs, unexpected acceleration, a sudden brightening, nothing appeared. The object's path stayed rigid, as if it were a dense, solid mass rather than a loose ball of ice and rubble. Planetary scientists from M1T and the European Space Operations Center debated whether the lack of outgassing meant 3 i a t l a s was unusually massive, 
or simply built differently from any comet they'd tracked before. A few even floated the possibility of a core so compact it barely responded to the sun's heat, a scenario that could explain both the stubborn trajectory and the absence of non-gravitational forces. The uncertainty rippled through every meeting. Risk models went from cautious to anxious as teams realized their standard comet playbook no longer applied. If the object wasn't behaving like a comet, what was it? Orbital simulations, run overnight on supercomputers, produced a dizzying spread of possible outcomes, some with Mars passing safely in the clear, others with its satellites and surface vehicles skating the edge of a cosmic minefield. Data scientists pressed for another round of radar pings, desperate for clarity. Each new measurement seemed to contradict the last, feeding a sense of controlled panic. The only consensus was that 3I-ATLAS had become the most unpredictable visitor in the solar system. Some at JPL started calling it the phantom mass. Others, more bluntly, called it a nightmare for flight dynamics. And as the next scheduled telemetry approached, even the most experienced mission planners admitted they were flying blind. The question on everyone's mind, if the numbers keep shifting, how close is too close for comfort? The first sign that something extraordinary was happening came not from Mars, but from the Sun. On September 24th, as 3i slash Atlas swept toward its closest approach, a colossal X-class solar flare erupted, blasting a coronal mass ejection straight along the comet's path. Solar physicists at NOAA and NASA compared the event to a cosmic tsunami, an unstoppable wall of charged particles and electromagnetic fury hurtling across millions of miles. Within hours, observatories from SOHO to the Parker Solar Probe began reporting a series of synchronized shocks, a bow-shaped disturbance in the solar wind, a sudden spike in magnetic field intensity, and, most dramatic of all, a surge in the comet's brightness by a factor of 20. For astronomers tracking the event in real time, the spectacle was both mesmerizing and terrifying. Comet tails have always been fragile, delicate ribbons of gas and dust sculpted by the sun's relentless wind. But this time, the tail of 3i slash Atlas twisted and flared with a violence no one had predicted. High-resolution images captured a sheath of ionized particles ballooning outward, while spectrographs registered a sudden flood of exotic molecules. The object's coma, usually a pale haze, lit up like a beacon. For a few hours, it outshone every other comet in the solar system, an interstellar lighthouse flashing warnings across the void. The timing of the solar eruption and the comet's passage was so precise that some at the Space Weather Prediction Center wondered aloud if the object itself had triggered the flare, or at least seeded the region for instability. Others dismissed the idea, pointing to the Sun's own cycles of chaos. But the data left little room for indifference. Parker's magnetometers recorded a field spike sharper than anything seen during previous comet encounters, dwarfing the numbers logged during Encker's infamous 2007 brush with a CME. At Mars, MAVEN detected high-energy nuclei deflecting in the solar wind, an effect rare at such distances and never before attributed to an interstellar visitor. Commentators on the ESA Solar Weather Service called it a once-in-a-century alignment, a natural experiment that no simulation could have staged. The spectacle forced mission controllers on Earth to rethink every assumption about what Mars hardware might face. If a comet from another star can bend the solar wind like a giant magnet, what happens to the delicate electronics orbiting or crawling across the Martian surface? The sense of AWE was matched only by a rising edge of fear. NOAA analysts convened late-night calls to debate the meaning of the data. Was the tail's wild morphology a sign of hidden mass, or just the sun's violence made visible? Could the sudden brightness spike indicate volatile compounds never seen in local comets, or was it simply a cosmic coincidence? No one offered easy answers. For now, the only certainty was that 3i slash Atlas had become the centerpiece of a solar system scale experiment, one that put every Mars asset at risk. And as the hours ticked by, the world's astronomers watched, transfixed, 
as the drama played out in real time. Mars has never felt farther from home than in the hours after the solar storm. Inside the European Space Operations Center, Andrea Akamatso's team watched radiation monitors tick upward, each spike a warning that something unseen was sweeping through the Martian sky. The Mars Express orbiter, circling high above the planet, entered hazard mode for only the second time in its two-decade mission. Engineers rerouted power, shut down science instruments, and double-checked the shielding around the memory banks. Every action was a gamble. Conserve energy and risk missing crucial data, or stay online and risk a fatal surge. On the surface, Perseverance's handlers in Pasadena debated whether to keep the rover awake or let it sleep through the storm. The risk wasn't just a fried circuit or a corrupted hard drive. A charged particle, moving at near light speed, could flip a single bit in the rover's memory, a cosmic coin toss that might erase years of irreplaceable science. NASA's backup plans were thorough, but none had rehearsed for a scenario combining an interstellar comet's tail with a Mars-directed solar blast. One engineer summed up the mood in a late-night memo. We have backup plans for dust, for cold, even for system glitches, but none of us ever rehearsed for an interstellar comet plus a Mars-directed solar storm. The stress is real. Our whole mission could be at stake. China's Tianwen-1 orbiter, built with reinforced shielding, switched to a low-power standby. Its controllers in Beijing reviewed real-time telemetry, searching for any hint of trouble. The spacecraft's radiation decimeters, designed to measure the slow drip of cosmic rays, now registered levels more than double the monthly average. For a moment, the risk felt almost personal. Years of work, billions of yuan and national pride, all at the mercy of a cosmic visitor no one had expected. On the ground, every rover and lander braced for the worst. Ingenuity's handlers suspended flight operations, fearing a stray electrical surge could leave the helicopter stranded. The Trace Gas Orbiter, a vital relay for relaying data to Earth, shifted its antenna alignment to minimize exposure. Even the most robust systems, hardened against the Martian environment, looked fragile in the face of a solar event amplified by an interstellar object. The protocols weren't just technical, they were emotional. Mission managers, some veterans of two decades on Mars, admitted to feeling gut-wrenching anxiety. The possibility of losing contact with a rover after a decade of flawless operation haunted every conversation. Mars had always been a proving ground for human ingenuity, but now, its robotic explorers stood exposed to cosmic forces that no one could fully predict. This was more than a test of engineering. It was a reminder that even the best prepared missions are vulnerable when the universe decides to rewrite the rules. The sense of jeopardy wasn't abstract. It was measured in heartbeats, in the silence between telemetry bursts, in the hope that each system check would bring good news. For every scientist and engineer on duty, the line between awe and fear had never been thinner. If you're following along, now's the time. Subscribe and share your thoughts below. Has Mars ever seemed more fragile or more vital than at this moment? Because the next data burst could change everything. Long before spacecraft and supercomputers, the sky was the world's warning bell. In 536 AD, chronicles from Ireland to Constantinople described a sun that dimmed for more than a year, its light weak, its warmth stolen. Procopius wrote of a world where the sun gave forth its light without brightness, casting a ghostly pall across fields and cities. Tree rings and ice cores now reveal the truth. Global temperatures plunged by over two degrees Celsius. Crops withered, famine spread, and the first wave of the Justinianic plague found a weakened population. For societies that lived by the seasons, the sky's silence was a sentence. Nearly 12 centuries later, in September 1770, the heavens erupted in color instead of shadow. Over nine nights, auroras painted the skies red from Guangzhou to Kyoto, from Europe to colonial America. Japanese records recall red night skies, as if distant wildfires, while European diarists wrote of flames and pillars stretching across the horizon. The cause, a series of gigantic solar eruptions, 
pushed the auroral oval to latitudes never seen before. In an age before electricity, the spectacle was terrifying, mistaken for omens or city fires. Today's scientists estimate the solar storm rivaled the infamous Carrington event, strong enough to cripple a modern power grid had it struck two centuries later. These stories are not just curiosities for historians. They are reminders that cosmic disturbances, whether volcanic veils or solar tsunamis, can upend entire civilizations. The 536 AD atmospheric veil and the 1770 auroras show how quickly the familiar can become strange, how fragile human systems are when the sky turns hostile. Modern astrophysicists and historians alike point to these records as lessons. The universe's surprises do not wait for us to be ready. As 3. I A TLAS approaches Mars, the echoes of past sky warnings grow louder. Every new anomaly is measured against centuries of awe, fear, and the hard-won humility that comes from living beneath an unpredictable cosmos. Avilob, known for challenging the boundaries of cosmic possibility, has spent months urging the astronomical community not to underestimate 3 I slash Atlas. His team at Harvard calculates the object's mass at nearly 33 billion tons, so dense and unyielding that even the sun's heat barely stirs its surface. While most experts still lean toward natural explanations, Loeb points to the object's stubborn trajectory and the absence of outgassing as clues that something new is at play. If this is a comet, it's one that rewrites the comet rulebook. Speculation is not confined to academic circles. Mission architects at NASA and the European Space Agency are already sketching out the next generation of planetary defense. The nightmare of a phantom mass sneaking through the solar system has sparked talk of sentinel missions. Dedicated spacecraft stationed near Mars and Jupiter, designed to catch interstellar intruders before they threaten robotic explorers, or one day, human crews. Engineers are pushing for detection algorithms that can spot a trajectory anomaly in real time, flagging objects that don't behave like anything in the current catalogue. The encounter with 3i slash Atlas is driving a quiet revolution in how planetary protection is imagined. Some theorists wonder if interstellar objects respond differently to solar activity, their alien chemistry or structure amplifying the effects of flares and coronal mass ejections. Could a fragment from another star system act as a cosmic tuning fork resonating with the Sun in ways our models can't yet predict? It's a scenario that sounds like science fiction, but every new data burst from Mars makes the boundaries of possibility feel thinner. The lesson is clear. The universe still holds surprises that can outpace even our best preparations. The debate over 3i slash Atlas's true nature is far from settled and every new observation is a reminder that vigilance and creativity are as vital as caution. If you haven't yet, subscribe and leave your theories below. What should the next Sentinel mission look for? And how far should we go to defend our outposts on distant worlds? The future of planetary defense may depend on questions we're only just learning how to ask. On October 3rd, 2025, 3i slash Atlas will pass within just 17 million miles of Mars, a distance that triggered the first ever multinational emergency protocols for planetary defense. Radar data confirmed an unexpected 0.03 astronomical units shift in its trajectory, and during the September 2025 solar storm, 3i slash Atlas's brightness surged by a factor of 20, raising urgent questions among NASA, ESA, and CNSA teams about its true nature and potential risks to Mars orbiters and surface missions. Yet, even with over 50 observation reports and three major agency advisories issued, the dense mass hypothesis and unexplained solar interactions remain unresolved. The historical record, from the Tunguska blast to the red skies of 536 AD, reminds us that cosmic encounters can reshape both technology and society. As scientists race to gather final data, what happens next will inform future defenses, not just for Mars, but for all robotic explorers. The story of 3i slash Atlas proves our vigilance and our vulnerability. When the universe sends a visitor we still barely understand,